Swift Guitar Lessons. Today I'm sharing with you the perfect beginner guitar song. This is a tune by Bob Dylan entitled You Ain't Going Nowhere. It's got just three chords in it, making it an ideal start for any aspiring guitar player. Let's get started. All right, a close look at the guitar and we're getting started with this super easy beginner guitar song. All we're gonna be needing is just three chords. G major, my third finger on the third fret of the low E string, my middle finger on the second fret of the A string, and my pinky here on the high E string, third fret. That's how I play it, though you may see some players play it with the middle finger on the third fret of the low E string, first finger on the second fret A string, and then two fingers here on the B and high E strings. That's my third finger, third fret B, and my pinky, third fret high E. That sounds like this. So these are two of the common ways of playing G major. This one I call Useful G because I have an extra finger available for little tricks. And this one I call Pretty G because it sounds so good. We're also going to be needing an A minor chord. Okay, for this chord, very dark, my middle finger is on the second fret of the D string, third finger below that, second fret of the G string and my first finger on the first fret of the B string. This is A minor. Now for this chord, you could have also played a chord that's called A minor seven, which is basically the same thing, except the third finger is off. Now this is a very easy shape to go to, and also very easy to get to the next chord, C major. Just put the third finger on the third fret of the A string to transition to that C major chord. So C major, third finger on the A string, third fret, middle finger is on the second fret of the D string, and my first finger skips one, it's on the B string, first fret. So we have C major just like that, strumming from the A string down. And you can see how similar the A minor and the C major chord are. Just one finger difference. 
So as we go through, we have the G major. Three, four, A minor. One, two, three, four. C major chord. One, two, three, four. And the G major chord. One, two, three, four. Okay, so just three basic chords, G, A minor, C, and back to G. That is our full progression, G, A, C, G. So we're starting with G and also ending with G. It's very easy to forget that part. Four beats each, let's go through the progression just one time using our whole note strums. That means we're gonna strum on beat number one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, now let's try that same exact thing, singing verse number one. One, two, three, four. Clouds so swift, the rain won't lift, gate won't close, the railings froze. Now get your mind off the winter time, cause you ain't going nowhere. Okay, so just three simple chords make up a progression that continues throughout the entire song. Now all you need is a great strumming pattern to go with it. I suggest the pop strumming pattern to get started. So, with my G major chord fretted, the pop strumming pattern, all that is, is down, down, up, up, down, up. Down, down, up, up, down, up. And if you're counting along with it, which I definitely suggest you do, one, two, and three and four and one, two and three and four and. Now let's try to apply that strumming pattern to our three different chords. On the G major again, one, two and three and four and. The A minor chord, one, two and three and four and. The C major chord, one, two and three and four and. And then of course, we'll go back to the G chord. One, two and three and four. Now a couple of little tips when you're performing the strumming pattern. Make sure you leave just a little bit early on that last upstroke so that way each of these chord changes sounds nice and smooth, like this. Okay, with our eyes over the sound hole, we're gonna loop through that progression a few times now just to get used to it at a very slow tempo. One, two, three, G. A minor. C. G. G. A minor. Okay, last points and suggestions. Learning a simple tune like this isn't just good for beginner level students, but players of all levels, because there's plenty of room to put in added tricks. Real quick, I'm just gonna show you a few things that you can add to this chord progression to make it a little bit more unique. Now, with that G major chord, ready to go and fret it? One of the things I might do in this tune is add in a little bit of cross picking. So if my strumming pattern is down, down, up, up, down, up, I'll take out those final strums and add in just a little bit of cross picking. Uh, a three note phrase going E string, B string, and G string will do. So check this out, I have down, down, E, B, G. A little bit of space gives me plenty of time to get to my next chord. Do the same thing on the C chord. And back to my G. Nice, slow, lush strums through the strings. Sounds brilliant with this type
type of tune. Okay, next tip, there are plenty of chord variations that you can add in to give this more of a folky kind of feel. For example, on the G major chord, taking your middle finger away on that second downstroke is a great idea. It sounds like this. I may also add my first finger on that first fret of the B string instead. Now it's on that second beat that you can do a lot of tricks on each of these different chords. And taking a look at the A minor chord, we can do the same thing with that first fret of the B string. Except this time, we're taking it off on the second beat. Alternatively, I could even add my pinky to the high E string third fret to create what's called A minor seven. Okay, different version of A minor 7 than we talked about before, but this one would sound like this. Alright, that sounds beautiful. Basically what I'm doing there is I'm doing the downstroke, the second downstroke, adding the pinky in, but then promptly taking it away the second I do an upstroke. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Taking a look at the C major chord, we can do a lot of those same tricks. Goes very well with the vocal melody. Do the same thing with the first finger. Or my personal favorite, taking the middle finger off, again, on that second beat. Okay, and my last suggestion, add in a bit of percussion to your strumming pattern. A great way to bring up the energy. Uh, this can be done to highlight the chorus sections or to create a breakdown at the end of the tune. I'll demonstrate it for you real quick. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so here's what's going on there. Basically what we're doing is adding in a percussive hit to either beats two and four or just beat number two. I'll give it a strum, then when that second beat comes in, I cover up the strings with my palm and then strike through the now muted strings. It's gonna sound like this. All right, this is definitely an essential technique for any aspiring rhythm guitar player. From there, you can continue with your pattern. Now bear in mind, the percussive hit is something that you're going to have to practice if you're a beginner. It doesn't come easily. Very commonly, uh, I've seen a lot of beginners basically put their palm down way too low and miss the open E string and they'll end up with some residual noise that way. So when you're doing this, make sure that your palm is firmly covering all the strings over the sound hole as if you're kind of cupping the sound hole, not back here over by the bridge. All right, so for the best uh, case scenario, my hand covers up over the sound hole. I got every single string muted, especially my high E string, which can be a little bit problematic. And I strike through the strings. So then I have one, two, and three, and four, and. You might notice that my left hand also kind of collapses when I do it as a bit of an insurance policy. If I'm covering up the strings here, and I'm covering up the strings with my palm, there's very little chance that anything is gonna get through, because I just want a nice snare drum type sound. So I'll call that a chuck if I'm gonna practice this with my pattern. Down, chuck, up, up, down, up. If you wanted to put in another chuck on beat number four, that would also be really cool. One, two, and three, and four, and, right? On beats two and four, just like a drummer would. So that's gonna add a whole other element to your playing here. Um, if I was going through one of my verses, I'd have Genghis come, he could not keep all his king supplied with sleep, and we'll climb that mountain no matter how steep when we get up to it. All right. 
right, so play around with your percussive hits, play around with dynamics, getting quieter, getting louder in different places where you want to seek emphasis. Um, plenty of things you can do. A simple song like this, the, basically you can throw in as many little tricks as you want to make it your own and make it a unique rendition. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on Bob Dylan's You Ain't Going Nowhere. In the coming weeks, I'll be posting many more lessons here and also on my new Patreon page where you can score some exclusive content for supporting the channel. Aside from that, I look forward to reading your comments and hearing from you. I am Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.